All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to write a dependence equation for a set of vectors. But to be able to do that, the set of vectors needs to be linearly dependent. Um, so first thing that we want to do is we want to check if this set of vectors is linearly dependent or independent. And then if it is dependent, then we want to write the dependence equation for it. So if you watched the last video, some of this stuff is left over from it. Um, basically, we talked a little bit about linear dependence. And if you have a set of linearly dependent vectors, then there's going to be an expression that looks exactly like this, where we have c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus dot 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 up to cn vn all equal to zero. C's are the scalars and v's are the vectors in the set. And if at least one of the scalars is not equal to zero, and we can write it in this form, then we say that that set of vectors is linearly dependent. If it turns out that every single scalar needs to be zero for this statement to be true, then that set of vectors is linearly independent. So if you did watch the last video, then you'll know that the way that we solve this is we take all of the vectors that were given and we write those as the columns of uh, the left-hand side of an augmented matrix. So we have one, zero, two, two, one, three, and then zero, negative two, two. And what we do is we just set all of the right-hand side just to zeros. And then we want to basically apply the elementary row operations and get this thing down to reduced row echelon form. If we can, uh, basically it will look like this. If it's a three by three, uh, this works for vectors in any number of dimensions. I just used three by three as an example. Um, but if you basically get this staircase of ones and everything else is zeros, then that just indicates to us that the set of vectors is linearly independent because there's a single unique solution and all these variables do not depend on each other. Whereas if you get something like this, where this guy right here, um, you have a, a number that's to the right or left of one of these leading entries, then this guy is going to be the free variable and it's basically going to make all of the other variables in this uh, in this augmented matrix with a system of linear equations really uh, dependent on that one variable. So that would mean that the vectors are linearly dependent. All right, so let's get started here with our elementary row operations. I think the first thing that we can do is we want to turn this guy into a zero. So let's do our three minus uh, two times R1. That'll turn that into a zero. So the first two rows are unaffected. And then we're going to have two minus two times one, which is zero. And three minus two times two is negative one. And two minus two times zero is just two. And zero minus two times zero is still zero. All right, the next thing that's going to be easiest here is let's just multiply um, row three by negative one to switch those signs. And then I think what we should do next would be to knock out this guy and we're knock out that one at the same time actually. So it's going to be R3 minus R2. So the first two rows are unaffected. And then we're gonna have zero minus zero is zero. One minus one is zero. Negative two minus negative two is zero. And zero minus zero is zero. Now, when you look at this, you might be inclined to try to get rid of this, but I'll show you that if we eliminate this and or swap, turn it into a zero, then we're going to generate a number here that's non-zero. But we can do that anyways if we want. Um, what we can just do is uh, row three, no, sorry, row one minus two times row two. So we're going to get for the first row, we'll have one minus zero, one minus two times zero is one. 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0, and 0 minus 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and then on the other side, 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0. All right, and then the other two rows were unaffected. And what we're seeing here basically is a free variable. And whether it's here or here, um, the fact is we do not have a perfect reduced row echelon form because of this free variable. And when we think about what the system of equations looks like for this, um, this is basically saying that we have one C1 plus four C3 is equal to zero. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put in every single variable. I think it's just going to make it super clear to us. So we have plus zero C2 plus four C3 is equal to zero. The next line here is saying that zero C1 uh, plus 1c2 minus 2c3 is equal to 0. And this last one here is just saying 0c1 plus 0c2 plus 0c3 
is equal to zero. So really we can just kind of knock out all of these terms that are zeros and uh, we can simplify this a little bit. And you're gonna see that everything is in terms of C3 because we have C1 is just equal, if we bring that over to the other side, is equal to negative four C3. And uh, C2 is going to be equal to positive two C3. And then C3 is just really, it's just itself. It's that free variable that everything else depends on. So basically when we were at this point here, when we, as soon as we find that there's a free variable, um, then we can determine that the set of vectors is linearly dependent. And here you can see that it depends on whatever we pick here for C3. Um, and then when we write the dependence equation for the set of vectors, it's actually pretty simple. We just plug in what we have here into this expression. So we get C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus C3 V3 is all equal to zero. But we know that C1 is equal to negative four C3, so times V1 plus uh, C2, and C2 is two times C3 times V2. And then here we have C3 V3 is all equal to zero. And uh, what you can also do is you can write this in vector form. We'll just expand out the vectors. And really the answer to the question uh, can be either of these two things. So it could be, you can write this as the dependence equation, or you can write the dependence equation like this, just however you prefer or what your professor is looking for. And uh, I personally don't really like having a lot of letters with subscripts and stuff. And so the point is this C3, this can just be any non-zero number, one, negative one, whatever you want. Um, it's just a number. So what you could also do is you could just replace it with any other letter that you want. Uh, for example, the letter A. If that helps you to visualize that this is just literally, you can pick any number for A except zero. Um, and it's just maybe easier for you. And if we actually want to test a number in here, let's just pick one number, for example. Um, like I said, this could be anything or this could work for any number, but let's pick for A or we're also calling it C3. Uh, let's just say where that's equal to one, we want to figure out if this expression is true, if this all equals zero. So basically we're going to get negative four times one, so that's just negative four times this vector. So with scalar multiplication that becomes negative four, zero, negative eight, um, plus two times a, so two times one, so that's just plus two times this. So we distribute that in with scalar multiplication and that's going to give us a four, a two, and a six. And then if a is just equal to one, then we'll just add uh, the scalar multiplication isn't really changing this vector. So zero, negative two, two. And we wanna check that this is equal to the zero vector. Um, and really, I guess when I wrote it in zero, uh, in, in vector form, you know, technically we should have written the zero vector uh, as it is in three dimensions because that's what we're basically working in like that. Um, so we want to see, is this equal to zero, zero, zero? Well, negative four plus four plus zero is zero. Zero plus two plus negative two is zero. And negative eight plus six plus two is zero. So that checks out, that's pretty cool. And uh, that's just one check for us. We can give it smiley faces and check marks, but you could plug in basically any number as A or any number as C3, whatever you want to call it, into our dependence equation, which is right here. And uh, you're going to find out that it is satisfied no matter which number we pick.